Hi guys, um, let's continue our lecture on the lymphatic drainage of the head and neck. Let me just enlarge my screen to make it easier for us to follow. I am going to go along with the book um, to cover all of these lymph node groups. It can be extremely overwhelming at first because there's so much information, but we're going to break it down. And a lot of these names are associated to the location of where they are. So as long as you know the bones and the muscles found around your head and neck region, it'll be very easy to know where these nodes lie based on their name. Okay? So the head and neck, the head and neck area is rich in lymphatic vessels. You can see it in these two images. Um, it is actually, so the cervical lymph nodes, enlarged cervical lymph nodes, are the most common adenopathy seen in clinical practice. So it is extremely common to see affected lymph nodes in the head and neck region. Um, and it is extremely, uh, it is definitely a, a, a first sign, one of the first signs that there's something wrong um, or that cancer could be present. And I can't think of a head and neck case where we have not treated the lymph nodes, um, especially if it's like an early stage or, you know, not too metastatic in that sense, then yes, you're going to include these lymph nodes because they tend to, to, to be, they tend to be like the first route for, for cancers of the head and neck to travel. All right, starting off with, we're going to start with the occipital lymph nodes. It's usually one to three in numbers. And occipital, where is the occipital lobe? Where is your occipital um, bone? It's in the back of your head. Okay, so occipital nodes right here, right in the back of your head. Um, these provide efferent flow to the superior deep cervical nodes. So something I want to bring up. Um, the nodes in the head and neck, they tend to have, so we tend to have like the superficial nodes, which are the ones that are reaching out to all kinds of areas, the back of the head, the front of the head, the, the chin. And then you have the deep cervical nodes. And the way that the flow goes is the superficial ones get the flow from the exterior surfaces or the most um, superficial um, areas of the head and neck. And then that flow goes into the deep cervical nodes, which are very deep into your neck. Okay. And from there, it drains out into your thoracic duct or the, uh, yeah, or yeah, the thoracic duct. Correct. All right. Um, so those was the occipital nodes in this picture. It's imaged here. In this picture, they're over here. Next, we have the retroauricular lymph nodes. Retro Retro means behind, auricule, auricule is your ear, so behind the ear, lymph nodes. They are over here in this image. They are also known as the posterior auricular nodes, so right behind the ear. Okay, these are situated um, near the mastoid and where the sternocleidomastoid muscle uh, begins in the mastoid area of your skull. And they... Uh, they drain the scalp, the auricle, and the external acoustic meatus. And they provide efferent drainage to the, again, superior deep cervical nodes. Next, you have the deep parotid lymph nodes. Um, the deep parotid lymph nodes are very easy to identify because they are inside of your actual parotid gland. So here they are. They're like ingrained in there. And then what they did in this image is they kind of flipped the parotid um, gland up so that you could see it. Um, so the deep parotid nodes are in, in inserted inside of the parotid gland. And then the other part of the parotid nodes are called the subparotid nodes. These are not within the gland, but right inferior to the gland, or sorry, deep into the gland. So deeper than the gland, you will find the subparotid nodes. That's why this is lifted up like a flap in the image. Um, and these drain the nose, the eyelids, the frontotemporal scalp, the external acoustic meatus, and the palate. And a lot of these structures that they drain, if you look at their location, it makes sense. Of course, the parotid would drain something around the ear. It's very close to the ear. Um, of course, it would, it, it could um, drain something around the eyes, around the nose, because it's, you know, halfway in, you know, it's halfway up your head, which is about the same level as your eyes, as your nose. Um, and they provide efferent flow to, once again, the superior cervical nodes. Your submaxillary lymph nodes. 
maxillary where's your maxilla it's right above uh it's where the front the top the top teeth are this bone right here that is your maxilla so your submaxillary nodes are going to lie very close um, very close to your nose right and right above your mouth because that's the maximal bone maxillar bone so your ma submaxillary nodes they are facial nodes they are scattered over the infraorbital margin so right underneath your orbit they um, go into the zygomatic arch so into your cheeks the buccal lymph nodes buccal um, regional terminology these are your cheeks buccal means cheeks so your buccal nodes are found within the cheeks um, and then I just wanted to point out your submaxillary nodes are also known as spatial nodes. So in this picture, they're pointed out as spatial nodes. And in this picture, they're called submaxillary nodes. It's the same thing. In this one, the buccal nodes are the ones in your cheeks. Um, your submandibular lymph nodes. So mandible. The mandible is the bone, your jawbone. The submandibular can be found where the mandible is. This is a very important group. It lies to the outer surface of the, of the mandible, and it drains the scalp the nose, the cheek, the floor of the mouth, the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, the gums, the teeth, the lips, the frontal ethmoid, and maxillary sinuses. So there's a lot going on with the submandibular nodes. You do typically see those when you're treating head and neck cancers. Those are within the contours that you have to make sure are lining up every day as a radiation therapist. Um, these provide efferent drainage to the superior deep cervical nodes. So, so far, every single one that we've mentioned provides efferent drainage towards the superior deep cervical nodes. Um, your retropharyngeal lymph nodes. Retropharyngeal. So, retro means behind. Pharyngeal is referring to the pharynx lymph nodes. Retropharyngeal lymph nodes right here in this picture. So pharynx will be right around here where your there's your nasopharynx, your oropharynx, and your laryngopharynx. And right here is the retropharyngeal node or the tonsillar node. It's either one to three in number. And they find they they can be found in the bucopharyngeal fossa. So where your buco, where your mouth and your pharynx are. So right around here makes sense. These nodes are involved in nasopharyngeal tumors and are included in treatment fields. So important to know where your retropharyngeal node is. Your submental lymph node, um, it's found in the submental triangle of the digastric muscles, digastric, so that we're talking about the month, mouth. Your submental nodes, I feel like these sit like right here, right under your chin, right under your tongue, okay? And they provide, uh, or they cover the areas of the, the digastric muscles, so your tongue, your tongue, your lower gums, your lips, the central floor of the mouth, and the skin of the chin. And these one, these provide efferent drainage to the submandibular nodes. So you can see these are more um, superficial. The submental are more superficial. These drain into the submandibular, which then drain into the deep cervical. Um, so your deep cervical nodes, let's talk about those now. Those are the ones, those, it's about 20 to 30 nodes all along the carotid sheath and around the internal jugular chain. So what that all means is your, your deep cervical nodes are actually going, they're kind of hugging your jugular, <laughs> your jugular vein. And that's what you see in this picture. They literally cut the sternocleidomastoid muscle so that you can see below the sternocleidomastoid, which is this muscle, if I can see it, if I can get it, here it is make it stick out on me it's coming from the mastoid to the sternum and to the clavicle sternocleidomastoid so below that you're going to find your jugular veins and hugging the jugular veins are going to be those deep cervical nodes which is the one where all the superficial groups drain into that deep deep group of um, lymph nodes um, and the most important node in that group um, would be in this in the superior region would be your jugulodigastric node. It's also known as your subdigastric node. It's right up here in this image. Um, I don't know if they have it pointed out in this picture. If you don't see it, it's here. The jugulodigastric node or your subdigastric node is one of the deep cervical nodes. It's typically located superior to the angle of the mandible and drains the tonsils and the tongue, so very, very close to where this retropharyngeal node is, um, right above the angle of the mandible. It drains the tonsils and the tongue. And the other deep cervical node that is very important is your jugulo my jugulo omohyoid node, which is more inferior. Now we're talking like down by the trachea now. It's a very big node. 
And these two nodes are important. You need to know where they are and you need to know um, what they what they constitute. So basically when these two are enlarged, you're most likely looking at carcinoma of the tongue. Um, this is like a quick indicator of, oh my gosh, we're talking about carcinoma of the tongue. It really narrows it down when these two nodes are enlarged. And I remember I needed to learn this for my boards. So you absolutely need to remember that for your boards. Your subdigastric node, AKA jugulodigastric node, be prepared to know both names, and also your jugulo-omohyoid node, okay? And that, and also uh, the deep cervical nodes, which includes those two that I just mentioned, they supply efferent flow to form the jugular trunk, which what, that will end up draining into the thoracic duct or the right lymphatic duct, depending on which side of the face we're talking about or which side of the head and neck. Um, remember, the right side drains into the right lymphatic duct, and the left side of the head and neck will drain into the thoracic duct. And that's it. That's it for the lymphatic drainage. Again, a lot of names, a lot of terms, but um, if you are familiar with your anatomy, you'll be able to figure out what we're talking about. Um, the one last thing that I want to mention that is not in your book, because I kind of went in the order of the book, but I think it is important to note, are your supraclavicular nodes. Um, you're going to see these once we reach the topic of um, breast cancer. We do, we do treat these um, a lot for breast cancer. And the supraclavicular nodes, again, very uh, self-explanatory in the, in the name. Supra, above, clavicular clavicular means the clavicle, so here's your clavicle, so above the clavicle nodes, and it's these little groups here, and they're also here, superclavicular nodes right over here, right above the clavicle. Remember your head and neck, um, your neck starts, um, I believe it's up by the mastoid, and it ends finally down by the clavicle, so these are also considered head and neck nodes, your superclavicular nodes, and that is it. All right, now I'm really going to end it. 12 minutes. That's awesome. Okay, so we'll see um, each other again next week to keep going down the, the anatomy of the human body. Thank you guys so much.